What is up, everybody? Z3KO Trinity here, fading into the light. It's so bright outside, it's not even funny. But I have for you today another Stephen King previews. So let's get right into it, shall we? <clears throat> right here we have Pet Cemetery with a really nasty sticker stain. Stickers, you gotta love them. But yeah, if you uh, had no idea who Stephen King is, I'm sure you already get the gist of the uh, what Stephen King previews are all about. But if you have no idea who Mr. Stephen King is, and you came into a bookstore, and you're like, huh, Pet Cemetery. And at first glance, you're like, hmm, cemetery spelled wrong. But let's uh, take a look at the front here, because that's what people are going to see. They obviously know, notice that cemetery is spelled wrong. But that's really the beautiful part about it, is because this cemetery was made by children. So the misspelling of the word cemetery was brilliant on Stephen King's part. But uh, in the picture, you notice a graveyard in the background, a man holding what looks like to be either a woman or a child, and it's just this really hint, uh, tinted orange light in the background. Then what looks like a what's supposed to be the ground is a cat, and at first this immediately would draw me in. If I was in a bookstore and I just saw this sitting on a shelf like that, I would immediately be like, ooh, what's that? So I will give this 100% props for the front cover design. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now you turn it over, <clears throat> there's uh, just a white hint, kind of like Carrie in a way. And let's see what it says. Uh, Stephen King's first novel, Carity. Carity? Who the fuck's Carity? Carry might never have been published if his wife, Tabitha, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to the actual story. All this just talks about his other works. So, if you didn't know who he is, you could read the back of the book and say, like, oh, he wrote Carry, um, you know, Salem's Lot, Stand, Firefighter. So, you can see a lot of different listings of him. Does that help out the book? I don't think so, per se, but we'll, uh, we'll just get into it a little bit more. So, let's see here. We open it up to that, and it says, Can Stephen King scare even himself? Has the author of Carrie and the Shining, Cujo, and Christine ever conceived a story so horrifying that he was, for the first time, unwilling to finish writing it? Yes, and this is it. So this story is the one story Stephen King was more afraid of to write. That's intense. Set in a small town in Maine to which a young Dr. Lewis Creed and his family have moved from Chicago, Pet Cemetery begins with a visit to the graveyard in the woods where generations of children have buried... For some reason, I have trouble with that word. I don't know, it just does... It isn't, it's like God never programmed it in my brain. Uh, buried their loved pets, but behind the pet cemetery, there is another burial ground, one that lures people to it with seductive promises and ungodly temptations. As the story unfolds, so does a nightmare of supernatural, one so relentless you won't want at moments to continue reading, but will be unable to. Yeah, will be unable to stop. You do it because it gets hold of you, says the nice old man with the secret. You make up reasons. They seem like good reasons, but mostly you do it because once you've been up there, it's your place, and you belong to it, up in the pet cemetery and beyond. Now, that little tidbit of what uh, plot summary you read in the uh, description, was that enough to grab you guys? Me, personally, hell yeah, it does. I love the poetry in it, talking at the end about the old man and the quotes from the book and stuff like that. I just, I think stuff like that, like the poetic kind of words used like that, really is what sets, you know, what really makes a writer a writer. To me, anyway. But what do you guys think? Did, was that enough to grab your guys' attention? And if not, if you're one of those people it's like, well, let me see uh, what the first... Uh, what the first sentence is, kind of person. I'm going to read that to you right now. Lewis Creed, who had lost his father at three and who had never known a grandfather 
never expected to find a father as he entered his middle age. But that was exactly what happened. Although he called this man a friend, <clears throat> as a grown man must do when he finds the man who should have been his father relatively late in life. He met this man on the evening, he and his wife and his two children moved into the big white frame house in Ludlow. Winston Churchill moved in with them. Church was his daughter Ellie's cat. <clears throat> and that's where the first paragraph uh, ends. So it immediately goes into basically describing Judd Crandall, like right off the bat. And by the way, Judd Crandall is one of my absolute favorite Stephen King characters he's ever made. Absolutely love him. And I love the actor, too, in the movie, too. Great choice of actor. But uh, I love how it immediately goes into talking to him. So with that paragraph alone, was that enough to really pull you guys into wanting to finish the book? Um, I think it kind of does because once you finish the book, you know the power of that first line, you know, meeting a father and how like close this guy is to family he wants to have this family together forever and that's literally the point of the book he's it's a man who's wanting to keep his family with him together for all of eternity but we all know that we have to face death eventually so does this book grab my attention yes it does and if you have not read this book there is something seriously wrong with you <clears throat> That's one of Stephen King's best, best books he's ever written. So, Next up, we have The Cycle of the Werewolf, which you've already seen my uh, video of the Book vs. Movie. Um, I do prefer the movie, but this book is still really well done, mostly because of Bernie Wrightston. Uh, absolutely a fantastic fantastic writer uh he is or he's not a writer well he is a writer too but uh he's mostly an artist he's the one that uh drew the pics inside this uh book like that but yeah um so you pick this up off the shelf and you see cycle of the werewolf and it has just a black background with like blood and it kind of has this wolf kind of hanging on the edge there now with the art alone I it is enough to really kind of catch your attention because if I saw this sitting on a bookshelf like that I would think huh I wonder what that's about because I don't know just the way that the picture is it's so simple but yet it's really really nice and it's the same picture on the back of the book too so we turn the book around and it says, Terror began in January by the light of the full moon. The first scream came from the snowbound railway man who felt the fangs ripping at his throat. The next month, there was a scream of ecstatic agony from the woman who attacked... The woman attacked in her snug bedroom. Now scenes of unbelieving horror come to each time the full moon shines on the isolated main town of Tarker Mills. No one knows who will be attacked next, but one thing is for sure, when the moon grows fat, a paralyzing fear sweeps through Tarker Mills for snarls that sound like human words can be heard whining through the wind. And all around are the footprints of a monster whose hunger cannot be sated. Now, with that little bit of uh, writing at the back there, was that enough to make you go, huh? I think this might be a good book. For me, I do believe so. Especially Terror Began in January by the Light of the Full Moon. I love how writers, you know, use kind of poetic, like some form of poetry, especially horror novels. If you add poetry to a horror novel, you sell me. Like, that is my absolute favorite thing about writing. And that's something that I'm trying to work on myself. I am working really hard on a book myself, but it's just, I'm trying, I'm not that good of a writer, but I want to master this poetic style that these writers have, you know. But yeah, let's uh, continue on. If that was enough to 
really grab your guys attention we have you know January through December and it highlights January the picture of you know January itself which looks like it's snowing somewhere high above the moon shines down fat and full but here in Tarker's Mill a January blizzard has choked the sky with snow the wind rams full force down a deserted Center Avenue the orange town plows have given up long since Arnie Westrom flagman on the GS and WM Railroad has been caught in the small tool and, so and signal shack nine miles out of town with his small gasoline powered rail ride rail rider blocked by drifts he is waiting out the storm there playing last man out solitaire with a pack of greasy bicycle cards outside the wind rises to a shrill scream Westrom raises his head uneasily and then looks back down at his game again. It is only the wind, after all. Dot, dot, dot. But the wind doesn't scratch at doors and whine to be let in. Now, what do y'all think about that? If that doesn't want to make you want to finish this book, I don't know what will. But this book is very very good it's a very short story um, actually each uh, each month in the book is kind of like its own short story about a werewolf which is actually really genius I don't think anybody has ever done that before write short stories like a collaboration of short stories based on one werewolf I think that's kind of cool and like I said teaming up with Bernie Wrightston was one of the best things Stephen King could have ever done was this enough to grab my attention? I've been wanting that book forever. Ooh, excuse me. And then burritos. And damn burritos! Next up, we got a paperback one called Thinner. I was hoping when I read it, it would help me get thinner. But no, I'm still fat as ever. Uh, <clears throat> I wish I had the hardback one. The hardback's art looks a lot better. But, uh... Let's just say for, you know, for this book's sake, you see this in the store, and you're like, huh, it's the number one bestseller, Stephen King, writing as Richard Bachman, which we all know, you know, all know that story. But it has a silver, silver body that just says thinner. And the words themselves are pretty thin, too. But the picture they chose for this book is like a man. It looks like he's in some kind of fire or something. And it looks like he's just bone thin, screaming so that with that picture itself I thought that it was really cool and beyond it to be honest uh, I did pick this book up because of uh, the art and I thought the name was kinda interesting uh, this was back in the day when I didn't know who Stephen King really was like I randomly picked out one of his books when I was a kid to read um, not Bag of Bones uh, everything's eventual because it had short stories and I saw this one, and I thought, huh, I'll, I'll, I'll get this one. But the back of it is just Mr. King himself. Oh, shit, why am I yawning? I'm going through all kinds of bodily functions. And it's really interesting, because if you see on the typewriter, I don't know if my camera will pick it up. Nope, it won't. It says the glass floor. And how interesting is that? Because Stephen King's very first story he ever wrote in his life was the glass floor well the one that got published I don't know and you know who knows what the very first one he wrote was but the very first one he ever got published and this one was in a magazine was called the glass floor but uh, I thought that was neat a little hidden Easter egg within the picture so that's kind of cool but let's hop right into it shall we And I love how this book does, it's like chapter 1, 246, so right off the bat he's 246 pounds. I wished. <laughs> but as the book progresses, he like gets down to like chapter 25, 122 pounds and stuff like that. That's, that's pretty, uh, really cool how he did that. <clears throat> okay, thinner. The old gypsy man with the rotting nose whispers to William Halleck as Halleck and his wife Heidi come out of the courthouse. 
that just one word sent on the wafting, cloying sweetness of his breath. And before Halleck can jerk away, the old gypsy reaches out and caresses his cheek with one twisted finger. His lips spread open like a wound, showing a few tombstone stubs poking out of his gums. They are black and green. His tongue squirms between them and then slides out to slick his grinning, bitter lips thinner. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you start a book. Right there. Immediately that grabs my attention. Immediately. It's, it's as if my one nipple is doing a sword fight with the other nipple. Because that... That I loved how he began that book. Immediately drew me in and immediately set the scene of the entire story right then and there. And the detail that he gives to this old gypsy bastard is just so wonderfully well done. It's kind of like his beginning with Annie Wilkes when she was giving him mouth to mouth and he was describing the way her breath stung and her yellow teeth and stuff like that. I mean, that, ladies and gentlemen, is good writing right there. So, there we have it, folks. We got Cycle of the Werewolf. This is Cycle of the Werewolf, even though it's a picture of a cat. This is Pet Cemetery. Uh, we have Pet Cemetery. What did y'all think of that? Did you uh, like the beginning of Pet Cemetery? Did you like the uh, plot summary? Uh, cycle of the werewolf what if you have not read the story what I read to you and what I've shown you did that make you want to go out and get that book to read be not just because Stephen King like oh Stephen King's my hammer I'm going to buy his book no matter what but I'm talking like if you you know are not a big reader you're just clicking this video because you're interested in trying to find different books what I did right there does that make you want to purchase that book and same with, before y'all know, it's uh, my reading card. Yes, I gave Finner, Fit Finner, Fit Finner, a perfect 5 out of 5. This book is my favorite one of Richard Bachman's series. This had a perfect ending where either way he paid for his sins. That's what I wrote in uh, the back of my card. It's like a little comment thing that I, I do. Uh, if you're interested in doing the same thing, <clears throat> what I do is I write the name of the book, and I write the page, how many pages it has, then I write the started, and I write the day that I started the book, then I put uh, half of the book, which is that many pages at the corner there, and uh, then I, the date that I had finished it. Yes, it took me a month, or almost a full month to read it, but hey, you know, it takes me a lot longer now because I'm so busy with work and stuff. So That's why I haven't been able to read anything. I mostly have been playing some games. Been I buy a crap ton of games. I try to get cycle through them. I'm cycling through movies. All kinds of stuff. So my reading has been very, very limited. Especially with comic books. But yeah, what did y'all think? Leave a comment below. Let me know how you uh, enjoyed the video. And I guess... Oh, 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 oh,